Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we'll be exploring another key concept in mathematics. If you find this tutorial helpful, then please show your support by subscribing, liking and leaving a comment. Your positive engagement helps me create more content and allows me to bring you more valuable maths lessons. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. Let's explore the concept of finding roots or fractional powers of complex numbers. Let's begin by considering a complex number, which we'll call w, represented in standard form as w is equal to a plus bi, where a is the real part and bi the imaginary part. Now let's consider raising this complex number w to the power of n, and that we have another complex number, which we'll call z, where z is equal to w to the nth power. Switching now to polar form, we have w equals rho into the bracket of cos phi plus i sine phi, where rho is the modulus of w and phi is its argument. Now if we apply de Moivre's theorem, we can see that w raised to the power of n is equal to rho to the power of n into the bracket of cos n phi plus i sine n phi. We also know that our complex number z, which is equivalent to w raised to the power of n, can be written in polar form as z equals r into the bracket of cos theta plus i sine theta, where r is the modulus and theta the argument of z. Due to the periodic nature of the sine and cosine functions, in this context, we can replace theta with theta plus 2k pi, where k is any integer. If we vary the values of k and take the sine or cosine of theta plus 2k pi, we'll end up with the same result. So we can rewrite z as r into the bracket of cos theta plus 2k pi plus i sine theta plus 2k pi. Now since z is equal to w raised to the power of n, we can equate our two equations. So r into the bracket of cos theta plus 2k pi plus i sine theta plus 2k pi is equal to rho to the power of n into the bracket of cos n phi plus i sine n phi. For these to be equal, r must equal rho to the power of n. And taking the nth root of both sides of this equation, we get r to the power of 1 over n is equal to rho. Also, by looking at the equation, we can see that n phi is equal to theta plus 2k pi. Solving for phi, we get phi is equal to theta plus 2k pi divided by n. Now let's substitute these values of rho and phi back into our expression for complex number w. So we know that w is equal to rho into the bracket of cos phi plus i sine phi and substituting for rho and phi we have w which is also the nth root of z or z to the power of 1 over n is equal to r to the power of 1 over n into the bracket of cos theta plus 2k pi over n plus i sine theta plus 2k pi over n. By substituting different integer values for k, specifically k equals 0 to n minus 1, we obtain the distinct roots of our complex number w, which are the solutions to w equals a plus bi when raised to the power of n. So by understanding and applying de Moivre's theorem, we can systematically find all the n roots of any complex number. Let's now look at an example of how we can use this. We are given the complex number w raised to the power of 3, which equals 1 minus the square root of 3i. So w is equal to the cube root of 1 minus the square root of 3i. So in this case, we want to find all three roots of w. So complex number z is equal to 1 minus the square root of 3i. So let's put this complex number in polar form. To do that, we need to find its modulus and argument. The modulus of z is the square root of 1 squared 
plus the square root of 3 squared, which is all equal to 2. And the argument of z is 10 to the minus 1 of root 3 divided by 1, which is equal to negative pi by 3. Now we have the modulus and argument of z. We can put z in polar form. So in polar form, z equals 2 into the bracket of the cosine of negative pi by 3 plus i multiplied by the sine of negative pi by 3. So to find w, we take the cube root of complex number 1 minus the square root of 3i. Now we know that this complex number is also denoted as z, so therefore we are taking the cube root of z. And so to find z raised to the power of a third, we can use the formula. So z raised to the power of a third is equal to 2 to the power of a third into the bracket of the cosine of minus pi by 3 plus 2k pi divided by 3 plus i multiplied by the sine of minus pi by 3 plus 2k pi all divided by 3. In this example, n is equal to 3 as we are looking for the cubed root and k runs from 0 to n minus 1. So we need values of k from 0 to 2. So that's 0, 1 and 2. So beginning with k equals 0, we can find our first root of w, which I've called z1. So plugging in the value of k equals 0 into the formula, we have 2 to the power of a third into the bracket of the cosine of minus pi by 9 plus i multiplied by the sine of minus pi by 9. And when k is equal to 1, we find our second root of w, which I've called z2. And this is equal to 2 to the power of a third into the bracket of the cosine of 5 pi by 9 plus i multiplied by the sine of 5 pi by 9. Remember, 5 pi by 9 is found by plugging k equals 1 into the equation shown above. And the third and final root can be found when k is equal to 2. And I've called this root z3. And this is equal to 2 to the power of a third into the bracket of the cosine of 11 pi by 9 plus i multiplied by the sine of 11 pi by 9.